So from the messages and the emails that I've received, the biggest hurdle for new bakers who are trying to bake sourdough is dealing with sticky dough and the consequences of dealing with a soft dough. Now, these frustrations can be one of the reasons why new bakers give up baking sourdough, which is a real shame. And in most cases, there's normally two culprits that lead to these frustrations, the choice of flour and hydration. So today I thought I'd bake two loaves side by side to kind of show you the difference between using a stronger flour or a softer flour and just a 5% difference in hydration. Now, while choosing the right flour and hydration doesn't always lead to success, I can tell you that choosing the wrong flour and messing your hydration up nearly always ends up in disaster. And of course, the hydration and the flour also play a massive role in the end flavour and texture of the bread. Now, there are some slight differences when you're using whole wheat flour or a blend of white flour and whole wheat flour, and if you're interested in that, I'll cover it in another video. The main ingredients for a sourdough loaf are flour, water, salt, and the sourdough starter, which is also made up of flour and water. So in my mind, flour and water are two pretty important ingredients. Now, this is the way I like to think about baking sourdough as a pyramid. I've got my flour and water at the bottom, so the first step is to choose a good quality flour that's right for the job, preferably one that's been produced for bread baking. Now, I'd suggest using a flour that's got a protein content of 12% and above, but don't get completely hooked up on protein content. You wanna use that flour to make a dough, get your hands involved, work out how it feels, because that is the true test of a good flour. The water or hydration needs to work in partnership and complement the flour. It needs to be at the level that produces a manageable dough to work with. And then once we've chosen the right flour and hydration, we've got a really solid foundation to build from. For me, the second most important factor is the fermentation. The combination of time and temperature working its magic on the flour and water. But if you've got that foundation wrong, then the dough won't become strong enough to support that fermentation. And then at the top of the pyramid, I've got my toolbox, like the box of tricks, all the things I need to tinker with the dough and make adjustments. And in that toolkit, I've got things like autolease, dough manipulation, which is the stretching, folding, lamination or kneading of the dough, temperature control, baking surfaces, such as using a Dutch oven or a baking stone to bake the bread on, steam, you know, using steam during the first part of the bake to help the bread expand or the dough expand. Scoring, the scoring of the dough which controls which way it's going to expand during baking. Now, I'm not saying that stretching and folding or laminating the dough isn't important because of course it is. It's an integral part of the process in some cases, but we can bake a really good loaf of bread without any stretching and folding or kneading at all. A no knead sourdough loaf, for example, but the building blocks are always the same. Good quality flour and the right hydration. Now I've decided to run with my everyday flour that I use for baking sourdough. It's produced by Robin Hood. It's labeled as an all purpose flour, but it is pretty strong. It's got a protein content of 13.2%. And in my blue corner, I've got an all purpose flour from our local supermarket. Now this has only got a protein content of 10.3%, so pretty low. But I do wanna mention that there's nothing wrong with this flour at all. It's just not produced with bread baking in mind. So I decided that for this experiment, the dough that's made with the Robin Hood flour would be at 70% hydration. Now the dough that's made with the softer flour, the supermarket flour, I'm gonna put that at a hydration of 75%. So you'll be able to see the difference between using a strong flour and a 70% hydration, then that softer flour with a slightly higher hydration. Now both doughs are completely identical, both use the same amount of starter, both weigh 750 grams, but if you want the exact weights and measures, they'll be detailed in the blog on the website, which I will link in the video description. Now my first dough is made with a strong 13.2% Robin Hood flour, and I'm making, as I said, a total of 750 grams of dough with a hydration of 70%. This is an easy dough to bring together. During the mixing, it's easy to tell that the flour is quite thirsty, and it takes a real thorough mix to work all of those ingredients together. It just kind of feels right, and at this early stage, I know it's gonna be a really nice manageable dough. Now the second dough is also 750 grams. I'm using the same weight of starter in both doughs, but this starter has been fed twice with the supermarket flour. And even at this early stage, I can tell by the look and the feel of the starter that there is minimal gluten development. 
The dough comes together quicker and this flour isn't nearly as thirsty as the Robin Hood. It feels soupy, kind of like a runny porridge. Now these doughs are just going to sit out at room temperature covered for 20 minutes or so just to let that flour hydrate. Now this dough is made with the Robin Hood flour and even after such a short period of time the gluten has already begun to form. The dough doesn't feel sticky, just a touch tacky, but really really easy to handle. And even when shaping into a ball at this early stage there's a skin developing, a nice tight surface, there's minimal tearing. The dough made with a soft flour and higher hydration feels sticky to the touch. If I applied any real pressure on the dough it would become really sticky so I need to use kind of a gentle quick touch. I think this is the first point where a new baker will recognise there's going to be a few issues with the dough. And you can see the surface of the dough, it's not smooth at all and it tears easily. So I'll give these doughs another 30 minutes and then we'll give them a bit of a stretch. So it's easier for you to see what's happening with these doughs, I'll pull them out into a rectangle on the workbench instead of stretching them in the bowl. Now this dough is made with a strong flour and 70% hydration. The dough isn't even tacky anymore. Really easy to handle and even at this early stage it stretches well without tearing. The worktop is clean and nothing is sticking to my hands. The dough made with a soft flour and 75% hydration isn't tacky, it's sticky. It takes a really light hand to work with the dough and it's got the potential to turn into a right mess. There isn't anything smooth about the dough and it breaks apart when it's stretched at any kind of capacity. So I'll get these bowls covered and we'll leave them for another 30 minutes. Right, let's have a look at these doughs next to each other. This is the dough with a stronger flour and 70% hydration. And this is the dough with a soft flour and 75% hydration. The dough on your right is made with a stronger flour, it's easy to handle, it's got good gluten development and it's starting to feel taut. It doesn't want to break, it's elastic and it pulls back on itself. It's got a really smooth, silky texture. The dough on the left is soft, it doesn't feel elastic at all, it's sticky, it's not easy to handle and it's certainly not a pleasure to work with. It would tear easily if I pulled it. So back in the bowls for another quick rest. So one more quick look before the bulk fermentation. The strong dough feels lovely to touch, a quick ball up and that is ready to bulk prove. The soft dough seems to be getting stickier as the process goes on. The surface is tearing quite easily and it isn't building any strength. And that just goes to show that any amount of kneading, stretching or folding or laminating can't save a dough if the flour and the hydration are off. Right, we'll have another look at them after the bulk fermentation. Now I didn't want to push the fermentations any further than this, I was getting a bit worried about that soft dough. The strong dough is a cinch to pre-shape the soft dough, well that takes some patience and a light touch. The dough is sticky and I know that if I mess about with this too much I'm going to end up with a real sticky mess. So I'll get this soft dough into its basket first and I can tell you I am extremely happy that after this I am not going to need to touch this anymore. Right now we'll get this stronger dough popped into its basket too. And at this stage I decided it was probably best to prove them at room temperature for an hour or two and then finish them in the fridge overnight. And the reason was that I didn't fancy my chances at baking that soft dough from room temperature. And I wanted both doughs to go through the same process. So this is the soft dough the next morning and even though it's come straight from the fridge and it's still cold, it still spreads outwards and the dough doesn't cut easily with the blade, so fingers crossed on this one. But you can see how much more easily the dough made with a stronger flour and slightly lower hydration holds shape and how cleanly it cuts. So both loaves of bread are going to bake for 20 minutes covered and then 30 minutes uncovered. So if you're struggling with sticky dough or perhaps your dough's not strong or it's not springing in the oven, then go back to the basics. Have a look at your flour that you're using and have a look at your water and just do some experimenting and see what works for you. Now this is the bread made with a strong flour and lower hydration. It was really easy to handle throughout the whole process. It's held its shape when I tipped it out of the basket and I scored it. The dough was strong enough to trap the gas produced during the fermentation. And along the top of the loaf you can see the stretch marks where the dough has expanded nicely and held its shape. The crumb's quite nice on this loaf too. Now here's the bread made with the soft dough. I was pleased to get this in the oven so that I didn't need to handle it anymore. And if I was new to handling dough, this would have been a nightmare mission. Now the dough wasn't able to support the expansion during fermentation and you can see how the dough is torn as opposed to stretched during that bake. And the loaf didn't get a lot of chance to spring. 
The crumb on this loaf is pretty closed and it's a greyish colour, but I think the thing that bothers me the most is the way that it tastes. So it wasn't looking great from the outset really, was it, for that softer dough? I mean, we could tell by that starter, the starter that had been fed with a soft flour, that there was no gluten development there and we were gonna to struggle to build a stronger dough. But if you wanna see the way that I'm looking after or maintaining my starter now, then have a click on this video here. But I do hope that this video has given you some insight into the differences between a dough that's made with a softer flour or with a stronger flour and just a little difference in the hydration as well. Have an experiment. See what works for you. But for now, I'd just like to say a huge thank you for watching. I'll see you again very soon. Stay tuned.